Hi, let's continue our video explaining MB edit this. So now we have the the full uh, survey loaded here. So it took me just like half a minute to one minute to grid this data. But yeah, just to make it pretty straightforward, I didn't show that. And then now we can switch, for example, to the 3D display. And the pretty nice thing with the 3D display is that now I have my bathymetry in 3D. And also the navigation uh, is uh, snapped over the, here, this, this the sea surface, because this was done with a vessel. But in case I had a, a ROV or AUV, it would show the descending and ascending um, uh, path and it would it would show uh, very nicely the all the um, the survey lines done very close to the, to the seafloor so it's pretty nice that you can uh, also switch to this 3d display but let's go back to the 2d and here we can uh, show for example the topographic slope and we can go to standard deviation which it's very it, it's a very nice tool because standard deviation uh, so it's uh, drawing the standard deviation in, in high definition so here it is and you can pretty see that th there are some spikes here that are outstanding so sometimes you you normally you have a higher standard deviation where you have a st uh, steep slopes but here we have some um, outstanding um, spikes and they are show and they are shown here pretty uh, clearly so if I would like to go here and do some editing I could just select this area small one and then I go here and as I did before I just you know um, get these guys here and this one okay so just quick and dirty and then I just say okay dismiss and then I say update bathymetry grid so we are gonna have to wait a, li a little bit because now I'm reading all the files so all my 12 files but doesn't take that long and you are gonna see that uh, the standard deviation at this area will change because now those files that created this high uh, standard deviation uh, are flagged so they are hidden from from the data they are not never deleted so they are just switch it off and and also the, the nice thing that i haven't mentioned before is that in the in this tool in this window and be added this whenever you touch a file so whenever you edit something on on that file um, you always have this ESF so all files are loaded in the memory so I have them here but these are the files that I have touched so this is the first file from the previous video and this is the file that where I cut those um, bad sounding so of course I can uh, I, haven't, I haven't done very uh, well I could do it better but that's not uh, the purpose here it's just to, to have an overview of the tool and then we can go to top topography again and I can go to histogram equalization it's uh, it makes sense on, on some um, on some circumstances but not normally not for bathymetry so then I can say for example no shading so no shells or shading by illumination which was the one I had before and shading by slope which is the default method because it enhances every feature uh, on, on the same way the problem with uh, the this uh, shading by illumination is that you can sometimes have uh, uh, shadow areas and where you don't see clear very clearly the problems and that's not very good so I normally um, go with the shading by slope and then I edit everything that is outstanding and of course sometimes I go to shading by illumination because it's useful it shows much better the problems from the data 
but sometimes when you wanna if I wanna do very quick a map I just go to the shading by slope so let's put it back and then I can switch off for example the navigation if I want and I can also I haven't mentioned before but uh, before I selected a contour so here I deactivated this is the default and now we'll activate if I would like to set the contours I go to controls color contours and the default was 100 meters I changed to 200 so this this was the default values and I can also here reverse the color table so if I would like to put it reversed I can do like that so let's reverse so what else we can change the color table you have some predefined ones and like this I normally like that like this because this is a very color uh, let's very smart color table because some people is color blind and uh, if you have the red color together with the green color you probably are gonna create a problem for them and so having just orange and blue and green it actually make things good for everybody and I, honestly I have the feeling that uh, very bright uh, colors like this bright rainbow color table kind of you know um, enhance things way too much and you lose a little bit uh, sight of the of the bathymetry so it's just too strong for me so and once we are done with that we can for example go to 2d control so we can shift the surface this is in decimal degrees and we can go to 3d control so I could rotate my surface uh, if I had the 3d view on I could just change put values manually here if I would like to be sure that I have a uh, uh, 10 times vertex exaggeration I it doesn't affect here because I'm in the 2d but if I am in the 3d you see it's pretty now stretched and if I go now and I put it back to let's say 2 if you press enter nothing happens so you have to put the value and press apply that's the way it is so um, we have here the let's go back to the 2d here we have the controls shading so I will put the this to view and shaded by illumination because it's where it makes sense so this is the source from the light so the azimuth and if I would like to have it from uh, south I put zero and if I want to from the north I put 180 and if I wanted from the east side I put 270 and so on so then dismiss and we go to controls and what we have here we have resolution so you can tweak the the, the resolution that from the when I rotate the way the this oops sorry I have to go to rotate model when I rotate the model it always rotates the model with a lower resolution so to make it quick but I don't know let's test here what happens I put it as a hundred so the the thing here is that he always tried to to have the map in full resolution when I'm rotating the map it doesn't do that but it tries to do that so yeah of course when I put the resolution too high like I, I tried to here to put 10 meters but this whole thing is done with 80 meters resolution so it doesn't make sense at all yeah whatever so dismiss and we have here projections so we can change from UGM to spheroid or geographic when you have large areas you really see the difference but here it doesn't show up that clearly and then here go back to the 2D 
what else? The nice thing with with MB edit this is that you have this site uh, site list. So when you select this, you can actually um, make some sites. And the 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 nice thing is that when I click here, I always see the longitude and latitude from this uh, point, and I always see the depth. So and dismiss well and then what else we have here we have uh, root lists and we have navigation lists so we have here all the the files individually and what else then we have the pan zoom so we, at the mouse you will ac access this these features here so and you have also action which is update bathymetry grid and we have dismiss so um, I haven't shown yet what you can do is that there is a mouse button that is not shown here but is a pick a nav file and I, I don't know if I have selected it but I can do it here I can say pick nav file and when I do that I just say okay I click on the file and automatically open the whole file so and if I go back to the to my window I selected one single file and if I don't go here at clear and I and I click on another one and I, I get a second file and if I click on another line I get a third file and so on and so on so in all the files are loaded here so I can have them all stacked together of course, the more files I start opening at the same time, uh, or if a little, the area is quite large and I have too many soundings, of course, the the performance of rotating this uh, hundreds of thousands of soundings can be uh, not that easy. But one pretty nice feature from from MB Edit this is that we can clearly, if I go here to pick knob we can pretty easily uh, delete all the turns where we have some really nice and uh, really not nice but really bad data so I can hold here and we did this before so I go here grab and I dismiss or I, actually once you, you once you are going to stop using this forever you can go to dismiss but in in, in some cases you can just keep this window open so I put it here aside and once I select uh, some more navigation here I have a multiple selection so I have this selection here and I have this selection here so if I go back here you see that's the soundings I just flagged and this is the, the, the new soundings I selected so I can go here grab and flag those soundings. So people like to say that in MB system it's impossible to delete turns but actually as far as I know it's one of the most convenient and most easy tools to, to actually do this because you can clearly clearly select uh, the the turns and in this case sometimes some turns are pretty, uh, pretty hard to, to, to select but if I just do a bit of zoom I just can select them with no problem so here I just go here and I go like that around the turn so and that's it another turn gone and I go for this other one so sorry and I go back to my window here so another turn and I can go on so so as you see it's not that difficult to delete turns it's basically you just select the navigation directly and that's it these turns are the turns I deleted are now gone and when I create the final map they won't be there so no big secret okay I think that's enough and uh, I just tell you well if you want to know more about MB Edit Viz, just open some of your files and play around.
that's it. Bye bye.